This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. Treasurer Peter Gutwin could face the consequences of contempt of parliament after refusing to comply with a public accounts committee summons. Mr Gutwin was ordered to provide an unedited version of the advice on the proposed Tamer Valley power station sale. But this morning, he appeared empty-handed. This is to do with your a simple question well, turned into a fiery debate change. between Peter Gutwin and committee chairman order, Ivan order, Dean. Order, order, order. So I'm entitled to my view, but I'm not allowed to state it. Make any closing statement you want to make. Closing. So, no, but I'd, I'd like your clarification. The confrontation came after Mr Gutwin refused to hand over the advice he received before the Tamer Valley power station was put on the market. Will you be producing an unredacted copy of that document? Uh, no, I won't. Mr Gutwin argues the document is cabinet in confidence and therefore cannot be publicly released. The Treasurer instead slamming the committee. The information received by this committee has entered the public domain without being formally released yes. by the committee. Uh, order, order. I've, I've, I've already indicated to you that I'm not going to provide you with any opportunity to go through that process and any criticism of this committee at all. This is to do with your reasoning for not producing that document. I'm simply flabbergasted by what occurred. It is extraordinary for the Parliamentary Accounts Committee to gag a Minister of the Crown from providing a statement to it. Mr Gutwin's conduct will now be referred to both Houses of Parliament. This is a very serious matter and may constitute the contempt of Parliament. This is clearly the Liberals trying to cover their backsides, uh, prepared to give the finger to a parliamentary committee. Tamer Valley Power Station was there to provide energy security. Clearly, uh, Treasurer Gutman wrote a letter that includes information that is explosive uh, that he is now too frightened to produce. Regardless of what is in that document, even if it said that I was the best Treasurer in the world, um, we would not be releasing that document. If the Treasurer is found to be in contempt, it's understood the Upper House may demand the letter or they could make life hard for the government. The Upper House, for instance, could decide not to deal with a single piece of government legislation until the government produces this letter. But only time will tell. Monika Dadson at Southern Cross News. A 21-year-old North West Coast man has pleaded guilty to attempted murder following an incident at Wyvernhoe earlier this year. Matthew Robin Renison entered his plea in the Burnie Magistrates Court this morning. He was accused of stabbing a 20-year-old man in the chest on Main Road, Wyvernhoe, in early February. Renison will now appear in the Burnie Supreme Court on the 1st of May. With Attorney General Vanessa Goodwin sidelined with illness, one of her senior positions is being handed to an up and coming colleague. Leonie Hiskett is now acting leader of the government in the Legislative Council. Considered one of the most taxing jobs in Parliament, Ms Hiskett will be responsible for steering legislation through the Upper House. The former farmer says the appointment is a sign of confidence in her ability. I feel very um honoured and very um, anxious and I've got some very big shoes to fill um, with Vanessa Goodwin not there but I will be doing my best, yes. She represents the electorate of Montgomery in the state's northwest, having entered parliament in 2013. The Minister for Resources is demanding an apology from the Greens leader over comments made two weeks ago about log truck drivers killing people. Guy Barnett says Cassie O'Connor's comments were extremely offensive, but the Greens say he's taken them out of context. With all eyes firmly on the government this week, it's shifting the focus to a political opponent. Guy Barnett was out fighting today over comments said by the Greens leader two weeks ago about log trucks killing people. But the opposition aren't having any of it. I'm disgusted. It wasn't a comment she made off the lip. It was well thought out and very well presented from her point of view, but it's it's devastating for the truck driver. Frankly, enough's enough. We're saying, please, you know, let's settle this, get it out of the way, withdraw and apologise. My comments were never directed at the drivers. They were based on the evidence that more log trucks on the roads will make our roads less safe. And if we do have any adverse outcomes, they lay firmly at the feet of uh, Minister Guy Barnett. 
Meanwhile, new forestry legislation passed the lower house two weeks ago, which means the possibility of reopening parts of protected forests for logging. Although the proposed legislation shows coops on Bruni that could be logged, the government has made strong assurances it won't be. There's a moratorium on forestry operations on Bruni Island. Uh, that's not an issue. I was there just a month or so ago, met with the local community. There is no issue. Uh, they are very confident and uh, pleased with the current uh, arrangements. This local business owner is still concerned and confused as the new legislation includes a map of proposed coops. He started an adventure cycling business two years ago, forking out $100,000 from his savings to start it up. It starts again, um, well, I'll close. Leave Bruni alone, as far as logging goes. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Tasmanians are on their way to help with the disaster recovery. Three firefighters, an SES worker and a Parks and Wildlife employee will assist with the clean-up. They will provide logistics, planning and operations support. Tasmania is part of an emergency services family around Australia where we help each other. Uh, we've had uh, the assistance of other states before. On this occasion, five of our best critical incident management experts are flying up there to, uh, to engage in that task. Uh, and uh, I know we'll be very proud of their performance. Two more, lo sorry, 20 more local emergency workers are on standby in case more help is required. Tasmania is calling on a top diplomat to turn around falling exports to Ireland. Touring the state today, Australia's Irish ambassador says we're now in a better position than ever to crack the Celtic market. A plan to stock Irish shelves with more Tassie brands. And to be sure, high-end labels will lead the way. At this stage there's not that much knowledge of the product and that's you know, where our job comes in. Despite being opposite ends of the earth, Australia's Irish ambassador says there's a growing taste for Tassie. And it's got that sort of exotic value that people think this is a non-traditional whisky producer. And that can only be good because local exports to Ireland are in trouble. They've fallen 75% in the past three years. Although Ireland isn't a major market on its own, there's potential for businesses here and there to work together. We're both island cultures, so we think very similarly, and we think there's some great opportunities to maybe partner and enter into third markets together in bigger markets that maybe Tasmania couldn't do it alone. You'd think selling whisky to Ireland would be like taking sand to the desert, but the ambassador says the Irish are after products just a little bit different to what's already on offer. The Irish economy obviously went through a very difficult time after the global financial crisis and is now bouncing back quite uh, effectively. So there's much more of a propensity now for people in Ireland to look at you know, what are essentially luxury products. Single malt whisky is all about stories and regions. So, so we're from a new world whisky category in the market. Uh, so that uh, conjures up a lot of interest. The ambassador also visited schools and food producers in the region. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. Charity cyclists were back on the bike, travelling from Launceston to St Helens for the Tour de Cure. The team started the day with a live cross to sunrise from the Brisbane Street Mall, where celebrity guest Mark Beretta called out the fastest rider on the field. A man who has ridden in 17 Tour de France is German star Jens Voigt. Is with us. Jens, you going good? Yep, so far so good. I'm not going too fast for you. I'm just hanging in there. Hang in there, mate. Another day. <laughs> Tough it out, Jens. The 100 cyclists travelled through Scottsdale, Derby and Pine Garner before reaching the East Coast. The event is raising more than $2 million for cancer research. You can catch a live cross to St Helens when teams set off tomorrow morning on sunrise. A 31-year-old Launceston man has appeared in court over a crash which caused serious injuries for two passengers late last year. The man has been charged with causing grievous bodily harm by dangerous driving following the high-speed two-car collision on Vermont Road in Mowbray. He's also charged with a string of traffic, drug and property offences. Police are thanking members of the public who provided information. There are more problems for Bellamy's, up to $16 million worth of sales in China at risk because the company has failed to meet new regulations. The news has sent the share value tumbling more than 8% today. The infant formula producer needed to re-register its products with China's Food Authority after changing its manufacturing plant in Victoria. However, the company announced today it has failed to meet that deadline. Earnings are expected to take a major hit in the first quarter of 2020. 
2018 when the new rules come into effect. A further look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to Tazplan, your local super fund. The share market has gained ground for a third straight session to close at a near two-year high. The ASX 200 index has risen by 22.7 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 76.61 US cents and 85.16 Japanese yen. The TSL season kicks off tomorrow night when Hobart City Demons host reigning Premier Glenorchy under lights. The Pies will field a new look side while the Demons will celebrate a very special milestone. Bailey Walker will become the 1,000th player to don the red and blue tomorrow night. Glenorchy are out to spoil the celebrations though. It's job made easier with the omission of Hobart City skipper Hugh Williams. He did his hamstring on Monday night, uh, just a slight, a slight twinge so we won't take him in. Kane Richter says he's not paying any attention to the Pies' big off-season of player losses. I don't, we're not going into tomorrow night's game listening to anything that's being said around what players they've lost and where they've lost them and, and where they're going. We're purely focused on what we're about and what we're trying to do. Aaron Cornelius also refusing to buy into talk as his black and white army prepare to kickstart their premiership defence under Friday Night Lights. There's seven, 15 guys who are lined up that were in the premiership team last year, so it's, uh, yeah, front of the footy, we're looking very good. They may have lost a number of Premiership stars, but the club hasn't lost the hunger for back-to-back -back flags. So uh, I would say that the difference between this year and last year is they've worked harder because they know what it takes to get to that level and I think they want to do it again after the experience that they had. At Lauderdale, Darren Winter hasn't put a line through gun forward Ryan Wiggins returning after leaving for interstate in the off-season. He's considering returning at some stage and uh, hopefully we can fly him in for a week, have a buy and... Um, get him sorted after that, but we're, we're sort of working through that at the moment. The Southern Bombers more than happy to win ugly against North Launceston on Saturday. We're probably going to get more numbers around the ball and um, make it more congested and cause a bit of a uh, bit of a dog fight in there. All state under 18 players will be available for their TSL clubs this week, with the Tassie Mariners game in Queensland called off due to bad weather. The Australian under-19 cricket side will host Sri Lanka in a six-match series in Hobart. The visitors training at Blunston Arena today with a legend of the game in tow. In town to take on the Australian under-19 team in a six-match series, the Sri Lankan side has brought some firepower. Chaminda Vast, the team's fast bowling coach, the young quicks looking to hone their craft in Aussie conditions. Yeah, we have five. Altogether, we have four fast bowlers, so it's good for them to get some experience. Before they meet the Aussies, though, they'll clash with a Tasmanian 11 led by young skipper Fletcher Seymour. They're probably going to be some pretty talented young players, so... Uh, as a smaller state to take on a big country like Sri Lanka will be a good challenge. With our playing conditions are pretty similar to what um, the teams will experience at the, at the Under-19 World Cup um, in, from January 2018, which is part of the, the reason for the series preparation for, for that event. Soccer and it's an all-Northern grudge match in the NPL this weekend. Rangers meet Launceston City. Rangers coach Lino Shuley crossing town in the off-season. The good thing is that we're at um, NTCA, so I'm not going to a... a, a city ground where I'm going to a different dugout that I'm used to sitting in, but, um, but uh, it's, it just is what it is. Neither coach giving much away except that the derby will be an intense affair. Any derby games are fast encounter I think anywhere in the world and Launceston's no different so um, can't take anything for granted. Previous um, performances go out the window and it's just who's up for it on the day really. And State League netball action continues this weekend. Kingston will square off with league powerhouse Crips. I think we knocked them out of the finals last year, so I reckon they'll want to get one up on us this year. It'll be the first big test for the up-and-coming Blues, who look to hold their place atop the State League ladder. We're really looking forward to what is historically a huge rival match with Cripps, and um, we think we've got what it takes this, this game. Good evening. Hobart 17 degrees today. Launceston, the state's high with 20. Burnie 17 and Devonport a high of 19 degrees. Temperatures all below average as a few showers persisted over the southwest. Friendly beaches in Scottsdale 19 degrees. Low heads in Helens and Cressy 18. Flinders Island, Wynyard and Ooze 17 today. Grove, Strawn and King Island 16. A coolish day for Liawini, one overnight, a top of nine today. Lots of cloud with the cold front stretching across the southern ocean. Tropical cyclone Debbie is now an X, which means she 
she can keep causing trouble and is doing so over southeast Queensland with cloud pushing from there right over the Tasman and points south. Low clouds streamed over Tasmania from the southwest today. Some cloud developed over the northeast this afternoon. Tomorrow the front moves further out over the Tasman. Ex-tropical cyclone Debbie moves off the South Queensland coast and is connected to a trough which moves back through the Territory and WA. The southwesterly winds should swing around to be more west northwesterly at 15 to 25 knots with that change moving across the state throughout the afternoon. Winds in the west picking up to 30 knots, the 5 metre swells decaying to 3 metres by evening. Strong wind warning current between South East Cape and Sandy Cape. To finish off the working week for some, a sunny day in Hobart, 19 degrees, 18 for Hewenville, Campania OK, a top of 20. Launceston, partly cloudy but fine, high of 20 degrees, 18 the top for Devonport, a late shower maybe for Georgetown, 18 the maximum. For Burnie, mostly sunny and 19 degrees, a shower or two developing later in the day over the west, Strawn and Wynyard, both 18 degrees. And for St Helens, 20 degrees, 20 for Swansea, Port Arthur sunny and 19 degrees. UV sitting at a moderate 5. On Saturday, showers extending statewide from the west in the morning before settling back to the west and far south by the early afternoon. A better day forecast for Sunday, just a possible shower in the west. And on Monday, fine and partly cloudy with light winds. A sunny 29 in Perth tomorrow. A light shower clearing from Melbourne. A morning shower in Sydney as well. Showers easing from Brisbane, a windy day there and a possible storm for Darwin. It's partly cloudy now, 13 degrees in Hobart, 17 in Launceston, clear in Devonport and 15 degrees. That's the way it's all shaping up for the last day of the working week for some, but of course with the weather, Joe, I'm working 24-7, seven days a week. It doesn't stop. Oh, we know, darling, we know. Thank you very much, Merv. Look, before we leave you tonight, just a reminder to motorists, the Bridgewater Bridge will be closed for night works this Saturday and Sunday. So that means the bridge will be closed at 7.30 both nights and then reopening at 6 o'clock the next morning. Motorists will need to detour via the Bowen and Tasman bridges. Well, that's all from us for now. See you a little bit later. Bye-bye.